Amen, amen. Can we give God another hand of praise? He's worthy of it, amen. And can we give thanks to our God for our parents, our dad and our aunt, Dr. Devlin and Trine, amen, family. Praise God. Well, you may be seated. God bless you. Thank you so much, worship team. Well, good morning and greetings to you. In the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ, on behalf of our pastors, welcome to our service this morning. Well, it's so good to be in the house of God as we draw this year to a close, the second to last Sunday of 2019. And there's no better place to be than in the house of God. Amen. If you are visiting with us, we want to thank you for coming to join us this morning in fellowship. If maybe from out of town and you're here on holiday visiting family and friends, thank you so much for being with us at our celebration service this morning. We would like to ask on behalf of our pastors, we'd love to welcome you on their behalf. And ask if you could just stand for a moment just so that we could greet you and acknowledge you on their behalf. And so if you're with us here, please stand to your feet. Allow us the privilege just to greet you. Good morning. Amen. Good morning so much. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning on my left. Amen. If you could remain standing just for a few moments, one of our ushers will get to you, just give you some information. And we want to say thank you. Enjoy the service this morning. We know that we're going to have a good time in the presence of God this morning. Amen. Thank you so much. Wow, quite a few visitors. Thank you so much for visiting with us. And we want to encourage you, if you are here um, for, for holiday further, um, we'd love for you to join us at our Christmas Eve service as well as our Sunday morning service next week. Well, at this time, family, I'm going to ask you if you could please turn your attention to the screens to view our announcements. Thank you, church. God's glory manifestation. The glory of God means the weight of God's presence and anointing. There are different levels of the weights. The glory of God means the level of weight of His goodness and levels of His goodness. The glory of God means the level of weight of His power. There are different measures of His power. The glory of God is the intrinsic worth and value of God emanating from within Him. The glory of God is the environment and the light of heaven. Now, this glory of God, there are different levels to this glory. The first level is the omnipresence of God, that God is all over at the same time. He's not manifest all over, but He is all over at the same time. Number two, the indwelling presence of God. God is not only all over at the same time, but He's in the believer. It's Christ in us. That's the hope of this glory. Number three, then there is the manifest presence of God. I was sharing with you these times, I sense the presence of God when I'm studying the Bible or I'm just spending time with God. Number four, the demonstrative presence of God. There comes a time when God just demonstrates. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you would ask or think according to the power that worketh within you. He just does things because he's God. And then number five, which is the highest level, is the transformative presence of God. He transforms our lives. He changes us from within us. We, we all looking at, we can look at the glory of God as in a mirror. And then we are changed from one level of glory unto another level of glory by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah.
Well, I mean, just a few announcements to highlight. Uh, firstly, tonight there is no service this evening, so please take note. We're only having a morning service today, so no evening service tonight. But our next service will be on Tuesday evening at 10 p.m., which is our Christmas Eve service. So please take note, no evening service tonight, but we will meet again on Tuesday evening at 10 p.m. for our Christmas Eve service. Now, just a special announcement to all those who utilize the church transport. The transport will begin to pick up on Tuesday evening at 9 p.m. So if you could please be at your respective pickup points at least by 10 to 9 so that by the time the vehicles uh, start picking up at those points, um, you will be ready and uh, you'll be able to be transported to the service on Tuesday evening. Then also take note, on Christmas Day there is no service. So no Christmas morning service, Christmas Day service, only a Christmas Eve service. So make sure you don't miss that special service with us on Tuesday evening, Christmas Eve, 10 p.m. Then next Sunday we meet again at 8.30 a.m. for our morning service, but kindly take note there won't be an evening service again next week, Sunday evening. And then our New Year's Eve service takes place on the 31st of December, Tuesday at 10 p.m. again, and once again, the transport will begin to pick up at 9, so if you could be ready before then. Now, I know we just have three days before Christmas, and I know there's always those last-minute gifts that we didn't get. Amen? You know those, those last-minute gifts, the one gift you didn't get somebody, or, you know, you just forgot to get? Well, we know about that, and we've prepared for you, family. And so at our book room, there's a special CD that has just been released by Pastor Michelle Tryon. It's an affirmation CD, and it's called Speaking Destiny. Amen? And this is available in the book room. And on this, there's special aff affirmations and confessions uh, concerning health and weight loss. Praise the Lord. We need that, especially after the festive season. Financial freedom, unlocking your destiny, and a stress-free life. Now, these are things we all want. I mean, we all want to live healthy and and, and, and we have good weight loss. We all want financial freedom. We all want to unlock our destinies in God. And we all want stress-free life. And so make sure you get this. This is a wonderful gift to bless somebody with for Christmas. And it's only 100 Rand. Amen? Only 100 Rand. And you can get that in the book room. I'm taking my copy for myself. Amen? Bless God. And you can get your copy in the book room. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. It's my privilege to call upon Mr. Sia Gule. And he's going to receive the offering this morning. Can we give him a hand? Good morning, church. Good morning. Man, praise God. Um, let me take this opportunity to greet your dad and mom. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. I do not take it lightly. Amen. Uh, let's read from um, John chapter 3, verses 16. Uh, John chapter 3, verses 16. It's, not, it's always not easy to stand behind this pulpit. <laughs> For this is how much God loved the world. He gave his one and only unique son as a gift. So now everyone, so now everyone who believes in him will never perish, but experience everlasting life. John 19 verse 39. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. So the background to this case, a certain man named Nicodemus had visited Jesus by night. So he, he, we are told that he was one of the three richest men in Jerusalem. He was also a very prominent and respected religious leader of Jews. And I questioned, or rather asked myself, why did he visit Jesus at night? I thought perhaps he didn't want to see people uh, he didn't want people to see him visiting Jesus, or he didn't want to be seen visiting Jesus because he was a person who was thoroughly trained in Jewish law and theology. In fact, Jesus called him a teacher of Jews in verses 10 of the same chapter, chapter John chapter 3. Now, he says in verses 2 of John chapter 3, when he had come to Jesus by night, he says that we know that you are a teacher from God because... There is no one who can perform the signs and the miracles that you do unless God's power is with him. So Nicodemus had actually seen something very extraordinary about Jesus. He recognized the anointing upon Jesus. And one of the reasons why I made Jesus' ministry so distinct is because 
He taught from the heaven's perspective and not from the earthly perspective. In verses 13, he says that no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the son of man who is in heaven. So he taught from where he comes from, not where he was. Number two, Jesus demonstrated the power of God everywhere he was, and supernatural miracles were apparent in his life. In Romans 1.16, Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. And that's what I want to just focus on this morning. We were taught last week about believing not for future, but believing for now. Now, Jesus begins to share the new birth, which is the new order of life with Nicodemus. He tells him you can experience the kingdom glorification or the kingdom experience, but you need to be born again. It's time for you to shift. So it comes in John 3, verses 16. He says that for God so greatly loved. Now I looked at that greatly loved. Great, great love. That love means that it is unlimited. It is immeasurable. It is undefeated. It is infinite. Now God did not need chemistry to love in order for him to love us. He did not need any feeling to love us. He loved us even before, for God so greatly loved. That was Jesus who was saying that. Now we have been taught that he loved the world. We have been taught in this house that that, that, word, that word, word means cosmos, translated in Greek, which means order or arrangement, universe, planets, the whole of creation. It also means people and resources and everything in it. Now the key in the scripture was that Nicodemus had to believe in order for him to receive this eternal life or everlasting life. Zoe life, the God kind of life, that calls it, that is a life superior in quality and super abundance in, qual in quantity. So Jesus Christ had come to give us the nature of God. Romans 6, 23, the wages of death is sin, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now we can see that Jesus Christ is that eternal life, and in that life is a blessing. In that life is the freedom. In that life is wholeness, riches, wealth, favor, peace, and everything you could ever imagine. Hallelujah. Now we just want to share a little bit of what God has really done in our lives this year when we, re we were re reflecting. I... I joined NCF back in 2012, and when I came in here, I was just a professional. I had no business, I was single, I was not married. But one of the things that began to happen in my life was really experiencing breakthroughs in my career. Um, I, I experienced several promotions. I mean, when I joined the church there, I was, with, I was working for Transnet by then, and I was almost getting promoted every year. But one of the key significance uh, events in my career was really being able to be awarded an, a leadership award by the group chief executive of Transnet. And while I was in Transnet again, I was able to do my mom's seven bedroom house in Friet, cash. Oh, yeah. Amen. And just this year, um, I'm sorry that I have not shared this with you, but I was really appointed as part of the board of Joseph Business School. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the board team of Joseph Business School Africa, which is under the leadership of Dr. Bill Winston Ministries. And then um, the second one was, so my, my role there is really to advise them on the strategic issues. And the second one, just, just really, I mean, we give God the glory for this, was uh, Zama's appointment, and, and God did this in my life, and God done it in her, into her life. Uh, we were believing God for a new role for her. In fact, she has been um, given or appointed in, in Hillcrest. She was supposed to go to Sentin. We came to you dead. That position was in Sentin. It was created in Sentin. She loved, the, she loved the organization, loved the company, and it was the greatest opportunity. She wanted to leave, and that was going to damage a little bit of some things in there. It was renewally words. 
We came, we saw dead, and dead prayed over us. We saw the seed. Now, that, that's just so amazing because that position was not here in Deben. We, we just said, you know what, sow it. God is going to see what it does, either in your business or in your career life. But just a month later, I believe, um, they said, you did so well, we can't let go of you. We, we can't really let go of you. So they created a new position here in, Deb, in, in, Hill, in Hillcrest. It's about five minutes drive from where we stay. So she's now being trained for a senior role. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Even a better position than the one that she had got in Sentin. And then uh, my time is over. I'm just, just quickly go to this. And then I was also, um, I'm part of the European uh, ambassador. This is a, a sustaining competitive of responsible enterprises. It's an international program, which is under the President Job Summit Initiative, aimed at transforming economy and creating better jobs for South Africa. So I was part of the 10 people which were selected in the country. And there's only two of us here in Deben. The rest are from Cape Town and, 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 jo and Johannesburg. <laughs> we were paid in euros just to do that program. And then the f just the two last testimonies. Um, I am also in the last phase of my MBA, busy with my research paper. And I got a bursary for that. I got the bursary from University of Cape Town. And I remember that that was the money that I was supposed to build I, I had to stop it and build, finish my mom's house. But, you know, later on, God just gave me bursary to be able to finish my MBA. And then lastly, well, God has blessed us with Ogushe Gwenkosi, the goodness of the Lord. Um, it's a vehicle that we just received on Friday. <laughs> Amen. And we really, really want to say thank you, Dad and Mom, from the bottom of our hearts. We 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 well aware that it is really by the grace of God, your ministry, your teachings, everything that you do for us. We really, really appreciate you. And I got married in this house. I started a business in this house. I'm two and a half years into business, and God has done really, really amazing things. And we believe in God that we will be able to partner with you and just do really great things and be able to support your vision. Amen. Can you just pray? Amen. So, Father, we just want to thank you. We thank you for giving us your extraordinary gift, Jesus Christ. We all that we are today because of him. We could have never achieved or attained any of the things that we have today if it was not for him. So we thank you for eternal life. We thank you, Lord, that it is now it is not when we pass on to be with the, with the Lord, but it is now. So we pray, Lord, that even as we receive, as we believe your son, Jesus Christ, that you will do signs, miracles, and wonders. We understand that, Lord, all that Nicodemus was looking for was, was to experience these signs and wonders. He was, it was to experience this glory. And, Lord, you told him to believe in you. And later on, he was the man who brought offering and perfumes to you. So, Father, we, we acknowledge you. We behold you this morning. We bring our tithes to you. We bring our offerings to you because we believe in you, because we love you, because we are committed to you. So we pray, Lord, that you will release a blessing of eternal life to each and every one of us, even as we trust you with our substance. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you praise, we give you glory for all that you have done for us in this year. And we thank you, Lord, that even as we have not finished the year 2019, we still believe that you can do things that we trust you for. And we give you praise and glory because you are a good God. In Jesus' name, amen. as we just worship God with our tithes and offerings. We know that we planned a very special service for our Christmas Eve service, and so we want to make a special appeal, invite family, as we really just truly rejoice in the spirit and not just the atmosphere of Christmas.
one of you and a warm welcome in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior praise the Lord I want to take these moments uh, to thank every one of you that have pledged towards our Thanksgiving and Eve offering and uh, we've we've got halfway there and so we got two Sundays to go and uh, we are trusting God that for a miracle. We trust in God for a great miracle. We've received 729,250 in pledges and so we want to encourage you to bring your monies in. If you have, it's not a seed till you sow it. A pledge is just a target. Uh, but just to share with you, there are many expenses that we have in the church and uh, many things go on behind the scenes. Just one of those expenses is all our equipment that we pay over 300,000 rand a month here. Yeah. In fact, it comes to like 320,000. Now we've done that for five years and we just got a few more months and that will be paid up and it'll be all ours. It was a tremendous, a tremendous act of faith that we did five years ago and it has been an extremely difficult time to bring that 
to keep that going. So there are many other expenses. So we want to finish this year to be able to pay everything. So thank you for every one of you. You've got a card on your seat. We've got this Sunday, following Sunday, and the year is over. And uh, we trust in God that we can meet all our commitments. The Bible says, don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you faint not. So don't faint along the way now. We're coming to the end of the year. We all got a part to play. And your due season is 2020. 2020 is your due season. Come on, say that. 2020 is my due season from the Lord. Yeah, say it. One, two, three. 2020 is my due season from the Lord. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for everyone that partners in. Thank you for all these wonderful testimonies. And even just to hear Sia, and to thank you also for the wonderful way you undertook with uh, Zama's employment. Lord, there are so many testimonies this year and in other years. We could write volumes about what you have done. And we thank you that it's going from glory unto glory, never receding, but always increasing. I pray and I dedicate everyone to you, Lord, that we will all partner in. For those that have been able to bring in their finances, I pray you will richly reward them. I pray for those that have partnered in, in pledges, that you'll give them the ability to bring it in, Lord. And we thank you that we have an excellent administration. We've got a good name as a church. With all our creditors, we have always paid on time. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for the provision comes from you through the channels that you use, God and time financiers. We bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All God's people said, give the Lord a big hand. Thank you. Amen, family of God. We'll just give the usher just a moment. I think there's still some people with their hands raised and filling in. We don't want to rush that. If you could just help me, ushers, if there's anybody, we'll just wait a few seconds for them. Is that everyone? Well, bless God, family. Can we stand to our feet? We're going to worship God and receive from the Word of God. But we're going to do our faith declaration together as we do that. Can we do our faith declaration? I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. My eyes are enlightened and I know the hope of God's calling on my life. I also know how rich is God's inheritance in me. Therefore, I know how valuable I am to God. I know the exceeding greatness of God's power. As I totally identify with Jesus Christ's death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, I've been made alive together with Christ, raised up together with Christ, and seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Today, I'm filled with the knowledge of His will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding, I am strengthened with might by His Spirit. Jesus Christ lives big in me. I am rooted and grounded in God's love. I am filled with all the fullness of God. God's power and love work in me, exceeding abundantly above all I've prayed for and dreamed about. 
I'm very prosperous in every area of my life. Therefore, I declare that my whole life, all that I am, all that I do, and all that I own brings glory to my Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, I'm blessed and filled with the life of God. Everything I do prospers, and I'm increasing in every area of my life. Amen. You're an awesome God. Yes, and we come this morning, God, to tell you, Jesus, that you are good, good Father. We stand in awe of you this morning, God. And because of who you are, Lord God, we've come to tell you that you deserve it, Lord God. You deserve everything, Jesus. You 
My hallelujah belongs to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our blessed God and our Father, we thank you that every day of our lives we celebrate your love, that you so loved us, that you gave yourself to us in giving us Jesus. For Jesus Christ is God and everlasting Father. We thank you this morning that during even the Christmas season, we celebrate you as well. That you became a man to be born of a Virgin Mary for the purpose of redeeming us and making us your own family. For that we are so grateful. Open up our understanding as we study your word and feast on your word. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a hand, take your seats. Thank you, praise and worship team. You are absolutely awesome. Good morning to every one of you and a warm welcome in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Praise God, hallelujah. Pastor Dale, just help me here. I'm having a bit of difficulty. Okay, I'm fine. Amen. I want to share with you from the heart of God just a few thoughts on glory transfiguration. Glory transfiguration. When Jesus was born, glory shone around. So the light of heaven is the glory of God. Just think about that. We here on the earth need Eskom. And sometimes ESCOM lets us down. But in heaven, there is no ESCOM or natural electricity. The Son of God is the light there. And then in heaven, the environment in heaven is the glory of God. And the glory of God really is the presence of God. There is His presence that exudes out of Him. It's like his aura just comes out. It's who he is. And then there is the, the glory of God is the, the goodness of God. The goodness of God. God is so good in his presence. There's his goodness that is just oozing out of him. Then the glory of God is also the power of God. It's the aura of God. It's, it's presence of God. It's, it's goodness of God. It's power of God. It's who God is just flows out of him. And we are studying that. That's what Christmas is all about, is God's presence. Emmanuel, God with us. And God loved us so much that he wanted to share himself with us, that we can enjoy his presence. I want to read Matthew 17 from verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bring, bringing them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment, his clothing, was white as light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear you him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were so afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise. 
be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from, from the dead. Praise God for his word. You will find in the Bible a number of times a, a phrase being used, a term being used, when God does something for man, it's according to the riches of his glory. The riches of God is in the glory of God. And the riches of God are both spiritual, as we'll see in a moment, and they're also natural as well, because everything natural came from the Spirit. God, who is Spirit, created everything natural. So everything natural was birthed from the Spirit. So there are spiritual riches in God, and then there are also natural riches because we live in a natural world and we need natural things to live in this world. And so God owns everything that he created. We must settle that in our hearts, that God is owner of everything by virtue of the fact that he created everything, including man, but then man fell and he lost the glory of God. But God sent his son. So wonderful how Sia shared it. God so loved the world. That's the people and the whole of creation and all the systems of the world. Uh, so that whoever believes now doesn't perish because Satan became the God of the world. Adam create, committed hard treason. And so Jesus went to the cross. He was born to go to the cross to redeem all that back to us. And he, he did that. Psalm 24 verse 1 tells us so beautifully, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So you can see very clearly, speaks about the earth, everything in the earth, and then it also speaks about the world. And then it speaks about the people. Can you see the differentiation that it makes here? Let's look at it clearly. See that scripture on the, on the, on the, behind me on the screen. The earth is the Lord's. Can you see that? So. The whole earth belongs to God now. It does not belong to the devil, even though the devil is a thief. People don't know about that. And so, and then also the fullness there of whatever is in this earth, and that includes money, wealth, uh, all the riches in the earth. The earth is filled with the riches of God. It all belongs to God. Then it says the world the whole of creation, and the systems also that uh, Satan is using to govern the world, God's going to fix it up. Uh, systems belong to God. And then it says, and they that dwell therein. It's important to see that all that belongs to your father if you became a Christian. God does give man stewardship responsibility or ownership. So he does give us things to own, but it's like we manage it for him and we use it for ourselves and also for the kingdom of God. We are distribution centers. But because we are stewards, God can take it away from anyone and give it to whoever he chooses. You must understand he is the owner and he can take anything away and give it to another person. No one when they die take anything with them. It all gets left here. Naked you came and naked you'll go. We enjoy all the benefits of the Lord, 
But you can't take your car, you can't take your money, you can't take your insurance policies. In fact, once you die, you've got no more control. You've got to make provision before how you want it to be distributed. But once you die, uh, you, you can't come back and control your money or control your family or anybody. That proves to us beyond a shadow of doubt that God is in control. It all belongs to God. Now, there are the riches of Christ also. So the wealth of God is in his glory. There are the riches of Christ. In slide 4, Ephesians 3, 8, in the Amplified Bible, Paul says, To me, though I am the very least of all saints, God's consecrated people, this grace, favor, privilege, was granted and graciously entrusted to proclaim to the Gentiles, that's all the nations of the world, the unending riches of Christ. And, and, and that actually means, number one, it, it never gets to an end. The wealth, what God, just think about it. For thousands and multiplied thousands of years, his riches never come to an end, both spiritually and naturally. Isn't that amazing? In fact, they're discovering more wealth. Every year they discover more wealth that they never ever realized was in the earth. They're boundless, these riches. There's no boundaries in the wealth of God. It's fathomless. You can't actually understand all the wealth. It doesn't matter whether you're a chartered accountant or how clever you are. You'll never be able to fully understand how much wealth. It's incalculable. You cannot put figures to the wealth that's in the earth. And it's exhaustless. You can't use it all up. As you use it, it increases. And then it says in the Amplified, wealth which no human being could have searched out. No human being can know how much this wealth. But God put this wealth both spiritually and naturally into the earth and into the world and gave us the earth to be our home so we can now believe God and serve him and do things his way and have everything we desire to be met according to his riches in glory. So the first thing, let's look at just one example of spiritual wealth. Now spiritual wealth has to do with strength. Dunamis, Jesus says you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And so just to live in this earth, you need strength from God. Why? Because there's a devil in this world. He's influencing people and they're demons and there's evil in the world. And people want to do one another down. They, they want to rob people. They'll kill you for a cell phone today. And you go through all different types of experiences in life. The whole world is going downstream at a tremendous rate. But we are called to swim against the tide, to swim upstream. Now, when you're attacked of the devil, and whether you're attacked through men, circumstances, and even through the whole uh, creation that the devil uses, which is storms and earthquakes. Uh, I mean, you can have the rug pulled off from under your feet. Things can happen in your family, can happen with your children, and sometimes they're beyond your control, and they can devastate you. And undoubtedly, there are people here this morning that have been through tremendous trials this year. And we all have. I've also had my fair share of trials, I'm telling you, and tribulation. We don't talk about them, uh, but we all go through these difficult seasons. Seems like delays. Things look like they're not working out. But you need the strength of God to be able to live through these different seasons because you are not always on the mountaintop. 
You sometimes can go into the valley. It's not always summer. Sometimes it's winter. So seasons change, people change, uh, situations change, and change is one of the only constants we have in life. So you've got to learn how to manage change. You even getting older and older, your body is changing. At 70, I mean, I used to enjoy eating late at night. I could have a bunny before I go to sleep, or get a burger, and double burger, double whammy. And, and enjoy it, and you sleep full. Now, if I eat late at night, I go to prop myself up with pillows and take Gaviscon and all different things. Why? Because, because the body cannot handle it. It's changing. But you've got to learn how to manage this change. And if you'll manage it through God, you will find that change can work for you. Hallelujah. Because he makes, come give the Lord a hand. God works this way. He makes everything work together for good for you. It doesn't matter even if it's negative. You may look at a negative situation and say, how can this work for good? No, that's when you must jump out of that circle. You remember the circle of your circumstances? We continually say, don't live from within that circle if it's negative. Just jump out and live in the kingdom of God. It's not easy because we're emotional beings and our emotions are created by our circumstances. But once you get skilled through training, you continually, when you find your circumstances are negative, just jump out of that and live in the kingdom of God. And as Sia so shared beautifully in John 3, 13, that while Jesus was on earth, he lived from a position in heaven. And that's where we got to live from, by faith. You live that life by faith, even though your circumstances are against you. Now, in Ephesians 3, 16, there's a powerful prayer of Paul. And, and again, uh, look at, at that term, according to his riches in his glory. It says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might in the inner man, by his spirit in the inner man. That word might is dunamis, the power of the Holy Ghost. So whatever we're going through, you must know there are some things you're going to go through in life. Some things you'll be able to move them, but other things you're going to go through. St. Francis of Assisi's prayer is a wonderful prayer. He says, Lord, teach. He said, Lord, teach me to, to know the things I cannot change. There are some things you're not going to be able to change. You can't change another human being also. The only person you can change is yourself. And you can influence someone else to change, but you can't force nobody to change. And so you, must, you need to be aware of knowing what you can change, knowing what you can't change, and then have wisdom to know the difference. Sometimes you're trying to change something you can't change. Now, those things you can't change, you need strength to go through them. And you can go through them victoriously through the strength of Almighty God. So here Paul is saying, the Apostle Paul, that he would grant you, there is a term, according to his riches in glory. This is spiritual wealth now. To be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Can you see that? You can pray, God, strengthen me in this season. Strengthen me if I'm going through this difficulty. I'm getting older and getting weaker, Lord. Strengthen me to manage this properly. When the three Hebrew boys were thrown into the fire, they were bound. It could never be easy. Sometimes we look at the end results. They didn't get burnt. And the fourth man was in the fire with them. But don't tell me it was easy. The people that threw them in the fire, they even got burnt. And circumstances are never easy. We, we can be better off without them and enjoy our lives better without the negative circumstance. But for something to work, you need the positive and the negative. A battery has a positive side and a negative, And when that can work together, it generates power. 
But in your negative situations, you can pray and say, God, strengthen me with might, with power, with dunamis, with miracle working power in the inner man uh, by your spirit. But it's according to how rich he is. Can you see that? Paul says that he would grant you. You, you, you got a grant here. You know what a grant, when the government gives you a grant, you get that money every month. This is a grant that every difficult situation, you can make a withdrawal on strength from God. Hallelujah. And the strength of God is for your inner man. So instead of fighting, reacting, getting angry, shouting, swearing, bring a resurrection of the old man when he's buried and gone, and just rather say, Lord, strengthen me. Strengthen me. I make a demand on this grant that is mine. Strengthen me by your spirit according to how rich he is. Now, how, how strong is God? How, how strong do you think God is? Come on, think with me now. Don't go fall off to sleep a week before Christmas now. I'm sure Christmas night and Christmas day you're going to enjoy your lunch. You're not going to be sleeping at all. So don't sleep tonight. How strong do you think God is? He just upholds everything by the word of his power. God is so strong. And now that's his reservoir of strength for you. Is in this glory of God. So instead of giving into depression, unhappiness, or whatever you're going through, then rather give into the strength of God. You understand what it means to jump out of the circle? If you stay in the circle, you're going to go down. But if you jump out, you can be strengthened and face what you've got to face and still serve the Lord. And the reason why you need strength in your inner man, verse 17 says, that Christ may dwell in your heart. It doesn't say that Christ may come into your heart, that Christ may live through you. Because you cannot live in your negativity without Christ living. Because if you don't exercise your faith for Christ to live through your problems, through you, in your problems, you may want to commit suicide. You may want to end everything up. You may want to make some decisions that will affect your life and people around you. And so you need Christ to be formed through your life. That's what it means Christ must live through your life. He must be formed through your life. And you need strength. You need the Holy Spirit to strengthen you in your difficulty. So I wanted you to see that it's according to his riches in glory that in the realm of the Spirit within you, there comes a time when you do need strength from God to go through what you're going through. Nobody else besides God knows your full experience. Nobody. We can say, I, I feel for you. I'm compassionate for you. And sometimes we can say, I can imagine what you're going through. But I tell you, even your own spouse is, does not know your innermost feelings and what you are really going through, and the pain your children don't know that. No human being, only Jesus knows that. And because he knows that, he also knows that you, can, you need him to help you. So it's wonderful to need the Lord's strength in your life. Give the Lord a hand, you're missing a nice place. Then there is physical, natural, material needs, money and jobs and promotion. Congratulations on your beautiful car. And so wonderful that you can give glory to God. You need to buy your own house. You, you have physical, material needs in your life. You also need to save. You need to invest. Take insurances for your, for your funeral policies. And, and take an insurance, 
must plan this next year. So when you get to the end of your life, some people don't even make an allowance for, for their burial policies. Some families got to go around borrowing money after that now. How are they going to bury somebody? I mean, that, that is so sad. The Bible says if you don't look after your family, you're worse than an infidel. So we should be able to look after one another, our families. You should be able to contribute to the work of God. And that is through material wealth. Material wealth. Now, the Bible says in Philippians 4.19, Paul says, But my God shall supply all your need, there is a term again, according to his riches in glory. Now, need, strength is internal. I shared with you strength. Need is external. So God can minister to you internally, and God can also minister to you externally. So we have also external needs. You need clothing, you need food, you need to do some Christmas shopping, you need to buy me a gift. No, I'm only joking. You, you need to give your family gifts and things like that. And Christmas is usually a more costly time than any other time. It's not in the gifts, but you can trust God to meet your need. Now that word need also means your dreams, your desires, and even what you want in the will of God as well. You can't trust God for something outside his will. You cannot trust God for somebody else's wife. You cannot trust God for somebody else's husband. You'd be surprised how so many people think. They can't wait for somebody else's husband to die because they think, Eesh, imagine if I got that wife. Can't wait for somebody else's wife to die. Just imagine if I can get in with that man and he can be my husband, you know. You'd be surprised how people think and, they, and then they want to pray those things to God. No, it must be in the will of God. That's why you come to church so you understand what the will of God is. You're filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. But see how positive this is. But my God shall supply. That's one of the most positive statements you can get in life. Shall supply. All, all, all. Does anything left out of all? All. Your need, dreams, desires, and want. But it's according to his riches in glory. That's why we miss it when we don't know the reservoir from where it's coming from. That's why the year 2020, we are focusing on kingdom glory manifestation. We must understand how in the presence of God, there is internal strength. In the presence of God, and miracles can happen externally for you. The glory of God is a great reservoir or bank of God where he's got everything you need spiritually and everything you need materially. And you make a de faith demand from the glory of God. Hallelujah. From the presence of God. From the goodness of God. And also from the power of of God, the glory of God. Now look at Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, the glory of God in the New Testament. Because I'm going to go back in the last 10 minutes and just look at Jesus' transfiguration that you may understand what God is actually saying to you this morning. Now Hebrews 1, 3 says, who being the brightness of his glory. Who is it speaking about? Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? The brightness of his glory. So Jesus Christ is the glory of God. You must know that. But he needs to be manifested. He needs to dwell. He needs to be formed. He needs to come out of your life with his life. Some of us keep him in there imprisoned. And we wonder why our needs are not met. We wonder why we feel weak. Because we don't live by faith in this thing. And God wants to equip you. That you can live by faith. And the light of heaven can come out of you. 
The environment of heaven can come out of you. Hebrews 1, 3, who being the brightness of his glory and express image of his person of God. And look at this. He upholds all things by the word of his power. It's all in the context of the glory of God. If you want something upheld, it's by power. It's there in the glory of God. And it's a shining glory, a Shekinah glory, a Kwasmula. Your face can shine. And we're going to look at that. We don't have much time this morning, but, but it's absolutely wonderful. In John 1.14, John 1 14 and the word was made flesh speaking about Jesus again the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld his glory now every time you study whether it's from the birth of Jesus to his life his death his burial his resurrection you will always find the glory of God and we beheld, we saw his glory, John says. The glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now you must understand, this is speaking of Jesus as the Son of Man. Because for him to be born as a baby from the Virgin, he, the Word had to be made flesh. So we see that the word of God is full of the glory of God. And when the word is made flesh and you believe the word and you live by the word, then there'll be a manifestation of that glory. And you can see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. And it's full of grace and, and full of truth praise the lord hallelujah then i don't have that on my notes you can just put it there uh, hebrews chapter 2 now that we know there was the glory in the old testament there was a presence of god the goodness of god the power of god the grace of god the holiness of God, all that is the glory of God emanating out of him. Then we come into the New Testament and we see that Jesus Christ is that glory now. That glory has come to be manifested. Praise the Lord. Even when it was manifested in the Old Testament, it wasn't yet the full manifestation because it was a receding glory. But this is an increasing glory. And in Hebrews chapter 2, and we pick this up in one moment. I was looking at it now. Verse 10. Hebrews 2 verse 10, if you can put it in there. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things. Can you see that? Everything belongs to Jesus. And then it says, in bringing many sons into glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering so we see that God's purpose for sending Jesus to the cross purpose for him to be born purpose for him to die on the cross purpose for him to live on the earth as a man purpose of him to resurrect and to ascend is to bring you into this glory how does he bring you into this glory he comes into your heart and when he dwells in you, he will radiate his glory through you. And we want to look in closing the last 10 minutes in how Jesus radiated it in Matthew 17. And so number one, he took Peter, James, and John. He didn't take a lot of them. He took three disciples. You see, when it gets to this glorification, uh, you must know that it's, it has to do, it, it can't be in a crowd for you. You cannot be a man pleaser. You cannot want to have a whole lot of people around. It's wonderful when we come together to worship the Lord. Wasn't the praise and worship team wonderful this morning? Absolutely. And it's, there is a place for that. We're not speaking against going to church. We need to come together and have a corporate expression. But in your walk with God, you, you can't have a lot of people giving you directions because you'll get distracted. 
And Jesus here, the Bible says, he took Peter, James, and John unto a high mountain. And that it, I looked at that word, apart, apart. And, you know, the word apart means he separated them. He separated them. If you want glory manifestation in your life, you're going to have to have a separate life from the crowds. You can't only want the crowd's opinion about you, what people think about you, what people must say about you. There's sometimes you're going to go through some suffering in life. In fact, 1 Peter 4 verse 14, the Bible says here, yeah, when you are reviled for the name of Jesus, you're reviled for your faith, the Bible says you must be happy because the spirit of glory rests upon you. Why? Because that glory will strengthen you to go through what you've got to go through. And so Jesus took these three disciples, Peter, James, and John, and the Bible says he went to a high mountain. What does that mean? You know, it's a higher level of living. If you want glory manifestation, it's not in the low places of living. The crowds are all here in the low places of living. They don't get their needs met. They don't have strength to face their situation. They need to get drunk. They need some uh, drugs. They need to go and have a party. Uh, they need something outside to prep them up. So you're going to have to come to a higher mountain. You're going to have to live from a higher level. And you're going to have to separate yourself also from some people that are discouraging you. Don't be deceived. Bad company corrupts good manners and birds of a feather will always flock together you can know somebody's outcome by their lives if you see the company they're keeping choose your company wisely during the christmas season don't just go with everybody even in the church not everybody is serving the lord properly there are some people that want to sleep with your daughters. Watch out. Watch out your children's company. Do some homework. Find out who they went out with and who they went out with before that. Keep your ear on the ground. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Uh, because I tell you, Connie's giving you lies on to end foot. So don't see strip Sam was a born in a linear language, so don't see strip and something like don't see strip Nam. Well, I'm not tinty a band of a basin kulun kulula. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Look after your children, look after your family, keep an eye on everything. Don't be just valegile and say, hey, hallelujah, everything's all. Not every Sometimes the parents are the last people to know what their children are doing. Because you think your children are just little angels. No, they're just like everybody else. And they need help and they need to be directed through life. And so, so what happened? Now Jesus got transfigured. The word transfigured is also transformed. It means the glory was in him. And now at his level of living on a high mountain, coming apart, the glory came out of his flesh. And it made his flesh to shine as the sun. But because the glory came out of his flesh, it even came out to his clothing and his clothing was shining like the light. You see, he, he got translated, he got transfigured. In that moment, he got transformed right into heaven while he was on the earth. And you know what happened is that Moses and Elijah, now Peter, James, and John are watching this thing. They see Moses and they see Elijah in this glory coming to speak to Jesus and Jesus is speaking to Moses and Elijah who lived so long before he lived so they were in the glory of God so what is that telling you 
that when this glory comes out of you, heaven connects with you. And there's no more gap between you and heaven. When people pass on, have you ever heard someone say, he's gone to glory? He's gone into glory. That's what happens when someone dies and they love the Lord. They've gone into the glory. And the glory becomes a cloud. It's a cloud of glory. That's where they're living. They're living in the glory of God. But we can see here because the, the glorification caused Jesus to be able to even connect with the, the, with the Old Testament saints. That's amazing. Amadlozi alungil. Those were spirits of, of men that have gone. Don't think ancestral worship is everything about it is wrong. is correct food. There's a deposit of God in culture. And so you must understand that the Old Testament saints are part of us here. They are surrounding us. Now, now if someone's not saved, don't go and worship them. Worship Jesus. And that's what that was. It wasn't that Moses and Elijah were blessing Jesus. Not at all. But they were talking about it because Moses represented the law. And Elijah represented the prophets. And so don't be scared of those that have died. Hallelujah. I God richly bless you. And then a cloud came over them. Wow. And then a voice of God the Father came through the cloud. Now think what's happening here. We can read this so quickly. Think what is actually happening here. And will the praise and worship team come up? It's my time is almost gone. Think what's happening here. Don't, don't, don't just read this and think it's only Jesus. This is not written for Jesus. This is written for you and for I. Because Jesus is bringing us, his sons, into glory. You are now carriers of the glory. So first of all, let me recap it. And we're going to close it. And I want to pray for you. So understanding must come to you. You may understand clearly why this is written here. For what purpose? Because Jesus says, don't tell anybody till I'm risen from the dead. You remember I told you about when he said, believe on me. If you believe on me, as the scripture says, out of your innermost beings will gopos, flow rivers of living water. Jesus also said, don't tell anybody till I'm risen from the dead. Why? These things will happen after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That's when it will be available for believers. And afterwards, after his resurrection, you can talk freely about it. So Jesus is our prototype here. Don't forget, he's our prototype. The glory was in him. Now he is in us. Christ in us is the hope of glory. So now, if he's in us, has he come with his glory? That's why you can have this hope of glory. Now you can see how it worked in Jesus... And now God wants you to know how it will work in you. Why? Because Jesus is now spirit. And Jesus is in you. And so Jesus in you doesn't have the problem of releasing glory. He showed his disciples. It doesn't even say he was praying earnestly. He was shouting. He was crying. No. He just took them to a high mountain apart. And then... He got transfigured. His face began to shine as the sun. Even his clothing was as the light. In that, this Old Testament, he connected with heaven. And in that, there's a cloud. It's God the Father speaking through this cloud. Many manifestations. And God the Father says, this is my beloved son. 
in whom I'm well pleased. Hear you him. Can you understand that was not being spoken for Jesus? That's been spoken to you and I for us to hear Jesus. And so God is saying in times past, God spoke to the prophets, spoke by his prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us through Jesus. Hear Jesus, not your circumstances, not your emotions, not what other people are saying, not the governments of this world. Hear Jesus, hear you him. You're going to have to be separated to hear him. And so uh, he, got, he got the attention of the Father. I believe that cloud is myriads of angels. And so the glory of God is manifested in all different ways. It can be manifested through fire. It can be manifested through smoke. It can be manifested through a cloud. But it also can be manifested through strength can be manifested by your needs being met. It can be manifested by you being saved. It can be manifested by you just being brought into that glory and you experiencing the presence of the Lord. All that is a manifestation of, of the glory of the Lord. So don't only want the spectacular. Sometimes we can we, we focus so much on the fire, smoke, and wind, but our lives are not changed. Our lives get changed through an internal transformation by the glory of God. And so uh, uh, now that Jesus is in you, i got news for you. You become the mountain. In the new covenant, you don't have to go to the Mount of Transfiguration. You don't have to go to Mount Sinai to experience the glory of God. You have come unto Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. So each one of you are the mountain of the Lord. And that's why on the day of Pentecost, he came in like a rushing mighty wind and he filled all the room where they were sitting and they appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire and it sat upon each one of them, sat upon the mountain. God came upon the mountain and God came into the mountain and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. So don't worry about climbing up mountains now. Don't go so climb up You are the mountain of God and God has come into your life. God has come into your life. It's come upon your life. Now let me close this. Now please understand this is, is, is a main part. This was recorded for you and I. That Jesus is the glory of God. That Jesus as spirit is a presence of God. That this glory is manifest in Jesus. And Jesus is in you. And that is what Paul is saying. He's praying for the church. That they would be strengthened with might by his spirit. According to his riches in glory. For what purpose? That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. So what happens? So the glory can come out of you and create a glory realm around you. And in that glory realm is heaven, is the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, is angelic ministry, is all the strength you'll ever need, is all the money you'll ever need. And I speak that into you on this second to last Sunday before the end of 2019, that God has created you for the glory of God, that Jesus Christ was born and lived and went to the cross for there to be a manifestation of His presence through your life for there to be a manifestation of his goodness through your life for there to be a manifestation of his power through your life and so you need to be skilled how to jump out of your circle of circumstances and begin to let Christ dwell in your heart through faith and I speak over everyone's life this morning that but my God 
supplies all your need, dreams, desires, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God, our Father, is strengthening uh, your inner man uh, with strength, with dunamis. Receive the strength of God. Receive it right now, according to his riches in glory. And the glory of God is emanating out of your heart, going into your mind, going into your beliefs, coming out of your life, connecting you with heaven. Emmanuel is here. Hallelujah. God is here. His presence is here. And your needs are met in Jesus' name. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Level. God bless you, sir. It's a new level.
want you to do a prophetic act. We know we've done it before, but I want you to do it again this morning. You have your own circle of circumstances where you know transformation needs to take place. You know that. Sometimes it can be inside you in weaknesses that are in you. Sometimes those weaknesses and now have created circumstances around your life. In a moment or two, I'm going to ask you just to step out of that circle. Your circle is there where your legs are. So everyone will take a step to my left to make room for somebody to step out. It's just a prophetic declaration that you are stepping out of everything that's not in the will of God for your life. You're stepping out of debt. You're stepping out of sickness and disease. You're stepping out of broken relationships. You're stepping out of pain. You're stepping out of all the attacks of the devil that have been ruling your life. And you're stepping right into operating in a heavenly realm in the kingdom of God. And then you watch what God's going to do for you in the name of Jesus. It's not over till God says it's over. God specializes in coming through whenever he comes through. And today, I believe God's going to come through for some of your lives in a way that you've never dreamt or imagined in the name of Jesus. I'm going to count to three and I'm going to say, step out. And when you step out, I'm going to say, step up. And in your mind, don't start floating, please. Don't fly to the lights. But when I say step up, you understand you're stepping up into a glory realm. Into a glory realm. And I'm going to pray that that's where you're going to live your Christmas. In 2019, you are living in the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. When Jesus was born, the whole universe was there. The angels were there. And the glory of God was shining. Meaning, He's Emmanuel. He's come for you to live in His presence, to live in His goodness, and to live in His power. You're not settling for anything less than that. It's His presence, it's His power, and it's His goodness. Now count to three, and I'll cause you to step out. And then when I say, step up, I will say, receive His glory. Receive the glory realm. And you receive it in the name of Jesus. And you'll dwell in that 24-7 in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Step out. One, two, three. Step up. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have stepped into a glory manifestation of presence, power, goodness of God, grace of God, holiness of God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be of the Holy Ghost.
Pastor O'Neill to thank God for this morning, dismiss you to your homes, but not from the presence of the Lord. And before he, he prays, I cancel out all accidents. Yeah. I cancel out all robberies, hijacking, burglaries, sickness and disease. I cancel out all premature deaths. None of you are going to die now, but you will live and declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus, happy, happy, happy Christmas in Jesus' name. Thank you. Hallelujah. Father, we praise you. We thank you, Lord, thank you. that we can say thank like you. David, it was good to be in the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Father, one day in your house is better than a thousand days elsewhere. We love you. We honor you. We thank you for your presence in this house. We thank you for the word that we've received from the man of God. We thank you, Lord, that our thinking has been elevated. Our spirit man has been strengthened. We thank you for the word that we've received, Lord, that we mix faith with our hearing that the word of God would profit us. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing of the Lord as we would leave. You said in your word, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and God, you add no sorrow with it. So we thank you, Lord, that as we go now, we go with your peace. We go with your blessing. We go with your love. And it may be a holiday season, but we don't take a holiday from Jesus. We still worship Jesus. We still lift the name of Jesus on high. We still magnify the name of Jesus. We still declare that that name is above every other name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee bows, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And so, Father, we bless you. We praise you. We thank you that as... Dad has refreshed us, that you will refresh him. As he has poured the word into us, you will continue to pour into him. We leave now with the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless us. The Lord keep us. The Lord cause his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift his countenance upon us and be with us both now and forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus and the church of the Lord, shout amen and hallelujah. hallelujah.